Hello and welcome <laughs> to Loaded Mag in UFC. Thank you to the voiceover guy. Uh, guys, how are you? Good, mate. Yeah, all good. I um I think I think you boys know I uh, I had last week off for Cheltenham. Um really enjoyed myself, it was very, very good. Um it was my week was slightly spoiled by a certain game on Saturday night, but I know we're not gonna talk about that. Um, but yeah, other than that, mate, all good. Back to work today, and um, yeah, really, really, really been looking forward to this show tonight. So um, yeah, really pleased to be back. But uh, Pete, how are you, mate? You okay? Yeah, all good, all good. Good weekend um, with the family, and uh, yeah, back on it again. Back on the grind. Um, last week before Easter holidays, so yeah, another, another break off. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Uh, but, it's, but it gets us even closer um, to that to that big March 29th, 30th weekend. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Now, now I don't feel guilty that it's a bank holiday here in Ireland today. Obviously, St. Patrick's Day yesterday. Yeah. So the bank holiday before us today. But Pete, oh, you're, 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 is it two weeks off you have for Easter? Yeah. <sighs> we earn it. We earn it. We work hard. You, you, we're, we're putting you in the good luck. We're selling you. We're selling you. Man. <laughs> Put those holidays. As long as you pay me off, us... man, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few we have to pay off, I think. Let's get into this. I'm going to start sharing screen and get into it. But actually, before I do, I should explain some of the rules. Because uh, the rules. So the first game we're going to play here today, we're going to play one or two games with this a squid game team. Uh we call, we call it squad game. I'm sure you've seen it before with this. But first game is red light, green light, and amber light. So uh, I think you need some rules of how you can play along in the chat as well. So to play along in the chat, uh, we there's three different hashtags you can use. So the first one is if you believe a player, let's say Matt Ritchie, for example, uh, needs, needs, needs to leave, say Ritchie. Good luck. If you believe Bruno should be part of our 25-man squad going into season 24, 25, uh, say Bruno, hashtag 25. And if you believe uh, Alex Murphy should uh, still remain part of our development squad uh, and or maybe go out and loan, put, uh, put in Alex Murphy, because there's, there's two Murphys, uh, and uh, uh, put uh, hashtag development loan. So that's how you play along in the chat. So any questions? No. None for me. Let's go. Let, let's go. Let's go. Uh, so let me share a screen and go from there. So, yes, this is where we start. So corresponding to uh, the traffic light system that we have, green uh, is 25 man squad, yellow is development uh, loan uh, squad, and the red is good luck. Thank you for your service and good luck. So, boys, we're not going to spend an awful lot of time on each of these. We're going to go right into it. Uh, so, mm. first off, Martin Dubrovka, where are we putting him? Mm. Hey, can I go first? You go, Pete. You, you can go. go first, Pete. Um, thank you for the memories. Good luck. Bye bye. Chris? Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Um, I was looking. I was. I was deliberating between the green and yellow. Um, and to be fair, I wouldn't put him in either. 
So I think, yeah, I think it's got to be a good look goodbye. Yeah, I think I agree with Pete on that one. You think, Daz? Well, mm. yeah, I, I would keep him as a third goalkeeper, but it'd be a very expensive third third keeper, and he's and he's thirty five years old as well, uh, and cool. his contract is uh, to June uh, twenty twenty five. I suppose I should have explained what these things are here as well. And this is from uh, transfermarket dot com, and yeah, the the, the current uh, listing and price, so he's down there is one million. I think we can ignore mm. those values. So that's one one done. That's so uh, we're, we're getting rid of Martin Dubovka. Next up, Kieran Trippier. What are we doing with trips, lads? I'm keeping. Um, I yeah, I, I I say we keep him. I say we keep him. Um, because in the main, I'll be honest. I think we should have got rid in January when we got that offer. I still think it was silly money. Uh, I think it was a real opportunity. But if we're talking on ability wise, leadership, um. And he is a first team player, then I, I would say, yeah, 25 pound squad. Um, on the basis that I don't think we'll get offered that money again, so that, yeah, I'd keep him right with you. Um, hashtag 25, get him in the squad, right? And seen a lot in the chat saying they're similar as well. I see, uh, people are going ahead as well. David Cook, relax, we're not to Batman yet. Um, he's, he's getting <laughs> um, ahead of the um, game. Uh, I'll throw just yeah. while we're on there, Daz. I'll throw a few up. So, David Cook agrees with us, Lisa our Spanner agrees with us, Jory Tune for Life, Gary D. Um, yeah, they all agree. So, I think I think that's the right decision. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I put Paul Dummett already in the good look country because he we know his contract isn't being renewed. Sven Batman, I think we're all going to say keep keep him um, in the 35 man squad. I, I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully hopefully his performances improve. Um, but yeah, he, he's the future of Newcastle United. So yeah, I think 25-man squad all day. Let's get this Let's on. Go. There, he is. there he is. Big spell. We're on already. Yes, I see that the, the chat is aligning with that as well. Nice one. Uh, we're on to Fabian Char, who's got an, uh, an extended contract uh, out to uh, June 2025. Um He's he's Pete. We'll go to you first. Fabian Shaw, um, ha uh, hashtag yeah. twenty five for me. Um, still got lots to offer. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll leave it as, as that. I know you are you're on that uh, as well, Chris. Definitely. Yeah. Alrighty, oh, that is uh, we've, we're flying through it already. So great, we're we're yeah, uh, we're doing schedule. well. Doing well. Well, not you too bad. So next up is Lascelles. Now Lascelles, we thought all thought he was going to Turkey, but he's got an extension to his contract, mm. so he's got another year with Newcastle. Uh, mm. I don't know if we would have got seven million for him. Anyway, I can't see that. But uh, Chris, I'm going to go to you first with Lascelles. Yeah, I think I think we're all in acknowledgement that we can't have a complete squad overhaul in the summer. Uh, and I think that Jamal Lascelles has proven this season that he is more than capable as a as an understudy, as a standing. Um, so I I would have I'm, I was actually quite pleased when I saw that he's uh, got a year extension. I think he probably deserves it based on what he's done this season. And I think that you know as a as a third, possibly fourth choice centre back, uh, and I include the left centre back in that as well. I I think third or fourth choice centre back. Yeah, I've got no problem with being the squad. And obviously, as we know, he's the club captain and he brings a lot of leadership. So yeah. I, I, for me, uh, I think twenty-five man squads okay. This one is is causing a bit of debate in the chat. Yeah, I see. it is. It uh, is. It's a split in opinion. There's, uh, and I see William is uh, William Smith is, is using um, color coding system as well, which will align. That also mm -hmm. that also works, William. So nice one, um, Pete. Uh, so, so are you aligning with Chris and keeping him? Well, we probably are keeping him. Well, well, what's your thoughts? Yeah, <clears throat> I can see why it's split in the chat because I think everyone expected him to leave in the summer. Um, mm. The one thing I'll say, boys, is that activating a year's extension doesn't necessarily mean that he's staying. It no, just no. maybe it just maybe could um, it just maybe could allow to hold a value for him so we get something from him. Um, so I, what I'm saying is, and the reason why I'm saying this is that. I wouldn't be surprised if he does eventually leave in the summer and he goes somewhere but for a fee because we've mm -hmm. still got a year's left on his contract. However, 
Um, Eddie Howe being Eddie Howe will probably keep him. The only thing I would say, um, so add him to the hashtag 25 for me. Um, but what I would say is, is, is that he has to be fourth choice. Yeah. Has to be fourth choice. And I, I think that's exactly what, what he is. He, uh, he is uh, uh, Paul Dumont's replacement for, for, for me. Uh, mm. And look, at he, he, did, he stepped in this year and played a number of games. So, yeah, uh, I think the decision is taken out of our hands for, for, for this one uh, with the contract already there. We'll move on. Let's move on to J7, uh, the man who needs to sign the contract. We need to give him a good offer. So, uh, Chris, I'll come to you on J7 first. What do you have in there? J7, all day, hashtag 25. Get him in that green column, does for me. Um, we miss his physicality when he's not on the team. And uh, he's, a, he's a top, top player. And I think he's now coming to the peak of his of his powers. Yeah, I think he's 27 years old, according to your spreadsheet. I want to see him in black and white, at least for the next three or four years. Um, maybe even seeing his career out at Newcastle. Because I, I just think he provides and offers something to this midfield that we haven't got. At the moment, um, so for me, he's he's a he's a really integral part of the squad. Pete, are you on the same page as Chris and Joe Linton? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, and I'll go one one better. Um, uh, he'll sign a human, in my opinion, he'll sign a new contract. Um, so I'm not worried. A lot of people are concerned about him. Is he going to sign a contract? Is he not? For me, he will he'll sign a contract, he'll stay at Newcastle United. Um, I'm convinced of it. So yeah, get him in the green. He's already there. Happy days. He's already there. Yeah, yeah. No, you 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 said it, and I, I'm aligned to that as well. No, definitely need to keep uh, J7. Next onto uh, Sanders Denali, who uh, he owes us big time. I think now uh, we didn't get to see enough of him obviously this this season. Uh, 23 years old, a contract till uh, 2028. Uh, it's it's a definite keep for for me, but. Um, any uh Pete, we'll go to you first and Sandro. Ah, all day long. Get him in the hashtag 25. Um San, uh, Sandro Tonali is gonna I'm 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 really, really excited about seeing him next season because I think we're gonna see what we saw at AC Milan uh, that made us want to sign him. Um I think he's gonna be a crucial part of our team next season. Um I don't know if you boys have watched um, some of the videos and uh, some of the things that have been going around interaction with with the squad. Um, you, you can hear in the background like his interactions with various different players. It looks like he, it sounds like his English is improving. It sounds like he's openly communicating with these guys that there's not really a language barrier. So that seems to have shored itself up. And by all accounts, uh, Keith Downey and a few others have talked about the way he's been training. Um, uh, yeah, I think he's going to hit the ground running once he's back playing. Um, so yeah, of course, for me in the green, hundred percent. Um, and yeah, I, I still maintain, boys, what I said way back when. Um, I still feel I, and I expect him to sign an extension for the year that he's missed at Newcastle United. I fully expect him to give to honour that back by signing an extension for an additional year um, as a as a, a appreciation for the club. That would be sweet, all right, uh, Chris. Sandro, where are you having him? He drinks Moretti and he eats spaghetti and he eats fucking Sunderland. So for me, um, no, in all seriousness, Sandro, Sandro is going to be a huge player for us next season. Pete's already alluded to the fact, you know, that he's really settling in. And it's a cliche that we've used over many years at Newcastle. Um, <laughs> often often it's been uh, devised uh, for, for saying it, but... I think he is going to literally be like a new sign, and he's going to be he's going to be well integrated. He's going to be up and running. He'll have had a year's training with the lads, learning how Eddie Howe plays, uh, getting to know his teammates. I think he's going to I think he's going to be absolutely outstanding next season, and I can't wait to see him in a black and white shirt. So for me, he has to be in the uh, hashtag twenty five. Yeah, and you know what? I'm sick of watching that. That well, I'm not sick of it, but I just want to see him score more goals rather than the one he scored yes. at, at Villa. More goals for us. Yeah. Now, this next one should be interesting as well. Callum Wilson. Um, and Chris, I'm going to come to you first on, on Callum Wilson. Where okay. are you having him? He's 32 years old. He's one year left on his contract. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you do with him? 
Yeah, this is a really interesting one. Um, I'll put you all at me, Rizri. I'm going to place him in the hashtag good luck. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing that isn't because I don't rate him, isn't because I don't think that he is useful to Newcastle United, because I think he is when he's fit. But the issue I have is the fact that he doesn't stay fit for long enough. Um, would I be upset if we kept him? Absolutely not. Um, but it has to be on the understanding that he's probably going to be second choice, if not third choice striker, because I do believe we need to bring in a new striker in the summer. Uh, if he's happy to do that, w wouldn't it be fabulous having a third choice like Callum Wilson? However, due to PSR, FFP, whatever you want to call it, um, I think if we were to get a decent enough offer for Callum Wilson, I think the club would snap it up. And I think he he falls into that Jamal LaSalle's category for me, like Pete mentioned earlier, in that he may stay, but if a decent enough offer comes in, uh, and when I say decent, I'm talking upwards of 12, 15 million, I think the club would accept it. Uh, I know he's only got a year left on his contract. I think we were looking for around 20 in January, which is probably not going to happen now. Um, so if we were to get 12 or 15 million for a 32 year old Callum Wilson who can't stay fit, I think it'd be reasonably good business. However, if we were to keep him for the rest of this, uh, for the rest of the season, I wouldn't have a problem with that either. But if you were to ask me as it stands right now, I put him in hashtag good luck and thank him for the service. Pete, your thoughts on Callum Wilson? <clears throat> this, this is a tough one for me, um, for, for a number of reasons. Um, one, because I absolutely love Callum Wilson. Uh, I love what he's done at the club. Um, I love the way he plays. Uh, all, all of that good stuff. Um, but the other reason why it's difficult is because I actually want Callum Wilson to stay. I want him to be our third choice striker. Um, I want him to be the third choice striker next season. Um, so um, it is difficult for me. Uh, the reality is, is that we need to raise funds. And I think that's the reason why I'll end up in the hashtag good luck. Mm. <clears throat> right, so I have the deciding vote here in this one by the sounds of it. Mm. Uh, and I am delighted to send Callum Wilson in the good luck, I'm afraid. Uh, for me, it's, it's the injuries. And I think uh, Jordy Toon for Life said something in the chat here. Go look at the, the R RVI for research into injuries. Look, if he, he is on his day, he's class. But... This season has been an absolute disaster from last season what he was class and he got his 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 trip to the world cup as well uh but yeah i'm afraid it's time is up for callum wilson while we can get some value for him and as pete said uh for the ffp psr next up is an easy one we're definitely putting uh, anthony gordon in the 25 man squad there's no need to ask uh but, uh, but i'll ask anyway get him in there He's okay. in. Let's all move day. on. That's all day, every day. Uh, yes, and the chat agrees. Um, right, on to Matt Ritchie. I'll start this one. Good luck, Matt Ritchie, I'm afraid. Thank you for your service. About for four years in a row, I've said good luck, Matt Ritchie, and he's still here. Uh, I, 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 I know. Uh, who do I have to fight if, if he gets another contract? That's that's all I'd say on, on uh, Matt Ritchie. It could be Matt Ritchie after fight. Pete. Yeah, you don't have to ask me. Let's get it done. Good luck. Thanks for the service. Get him in. Nice one. Chris. Yeah, probably probably gonna be the easiest, the easiest good luck one today, I'd say. Um and yeah, unanimous. Yeah, I think I think uh, Matt Ritchie's been a fantastic servant to the club uh, over the years, but now is definitely, definitely the time to go. Okay, we'll move on. We're on to Matt Target. Um, Pete, we'll go to you first of Matt Target. Um, yeah, thanks for the service. Good luck. Move on. Um, 100k a week. <laughs> the, 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 we, won't get, we won't get a better chance of getting a fee for him. Um, again, I think um, if it's rumoured to be 100, 100k a week in wages, uh, yeah, we definitely we need to recoup some of that. I imagine it's not. I imagine it's probably more around the 50, 60 mark. But again, for a third choice left back, far too much in terms of wages. Um, and someone that you don't really see progressing at the club. So, um, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd move that on. Chris, my target for you. You want to keep yeah. this under care week? 
I think I think the only debate for me, um, and no, 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 I'd, I'd like to get rid of that hundred k week. The only, the only, um, the only question I've got, I suppose, is whether or not we could sell them on a permanent basis, and then I might consider the development loan column only for the fact that maybe we'd loan them out with a, the option of a, of a, you know, a permanent deal. I don't know. In an ideal world, get his wages off the bill completely. Um, I think we've heard rumours, haven't we, that Matt, um, Matt Ritchie, that um, Matt Target is, um, you know, wanting to move away because he wants regular first team football, and that's to his credit. And he, 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 you know, he's good enough to be a regular Premier League footballer, just probably at the other end of the table, I'd say. Um, he would be a good signing for any of the promoted sides. You know, I could see him. You know, I don't know. I could, I could see him at a number of clubs, but I think, I think he could secure a decent move. And if we can get his wages off the wage bill and bring in a few quid as well, it would be it would be good. So the only the only thing for me is whether he ends up in yellow or red. But either or, he's not in that twenty five man squad for me. If if Andy Ford's comments right, and it says one hundred k, he is on one hundred k. Uh, I know people are arguing about it and having opinions uh, and all the rest of it um, on mm-hmm. socials. But if he is on one hundred k, we need to get him out of the club asap, um, because having a player that's a third choice left back in this squad at 100k a week when Bruno Gamerez who's our most or a player on the highest wages um yeah I, I need to be able to sleep at night because I <laughs> you, you remember how I was with, with, with Chris Wood I'm even worse <laughs> yeah. with Matt Todd like I'm not even gonna lie because uh, we needed Chris Wood for that period of time so yeah fair enough at this point now we don't need Matt Target in my opinion you know, yeah. we, we we talked about a particular player that we I'm sure we're going to talk about um, it, it very shortly. Um, who's a better option for me um, in that position? So for me, I think he needs to move on. Same for me, lads. Uh, I I just think it, it, as we're offloading them or if we're loaning them out even uh if we can't get a, a buyer we might have to pay subsidize some of those wages because uh, if it's that crazy it's it's uh we'll move on uh on to an easy one isaac he's in the in the green column uh all day long uh no one's going to disagree <coughs> with that no no definitely not next up one that splits opinion um mm. Uh, on social media, at least Harvey Barnes. For me, uh, I think he should be stay. He should stay in the twenty five man squad. Um, he he just it just so unlucky this season, and he's not. Uh, he's, he's not has, in the past. He hasn't been as unlucky with injuries, but I think he he will come good uh, next season uh, for us. So I'm keeping Harvey Barnes. Chris, yeah, um, Harvey Barnes. He needs another season. Uh, I think I think he's a very talented lad. Um, I'm still I'm still not hundred percent sure. I'm still not hundred percent sure that he. How can I say this? I'm not wholly convinced that he's the the type of winger that we would normally go for, given the wingers that we've got at the moment. And you know, he offers something different. I get that. Um, I'm you know fully fit, run of games. I'm sure you know he will he will prove myself and probably a lot of other people wrong. Um, he's been very unlucky with injuries, so I can't knock him for that. I just I I don't know. He's he's maybe not the type of winger that I thought maybe we would go for because, like I say, I look at Anthony Gordon, I look at Saint Maximin, I look at Miggy. They're not like Harvey Barnes, but maybe that's what we need. Maybe that's the balance. I don't know. Um, I'm yet to be wild, I've got to be honest, but in fairness, he's not really had that much of an opportunity. Um, but certainly for the, for this and, you know, to give him another year is, is a no brainer for me. And I don't think the club would be looking to move him on anyway. Um, but I think he's got a lot to prove. Um, talking of, talking of Sandro Tonali owing us, I think Harvey Barnes owes us as well. Um, you know, I expect we paid, we paid a lot of money to Leicester to bring him into the club. Um, and yes, the injuries haven't been his fault whatsoever. But I'd like, you know, I'd like to see him get a run of games and really, you know, cement his place on that left hand side and maybe give Eddie Howe a bit of a headache with any luck um, and what to do with Anthony Gordon. But yeah, I, I, I do think he is, you know, hashtag, uh, hashtag 25. Pete, Harvey Barnes for you. That's an easy decision. Uh, hashtag 25. Um, comes with brilliant pedigree and credentials. Um, a top top technician in front of goal, um, something that we lack from from certain attacking players. 
Um, he has the ability to put the ball in the net. Um, nobody can judge him on this season because he hasn't played. He hasn't kicked a ball. Um, and if you look at his, if you actually look at his injury history, uh, this has been the most he's ever been injured in his career in this season. Um, his injury record's actually really good. Um, so this has been an anomaly for him. He's already talked about it being one of the hardest seasons he's ever had in football. Um, we should be getting behind him. We should be saying, you know what, you've had a really unlucky season. Let's get behind. Let's get behind him. Let's support him, and let's kind of roar him on to give him the confidence to regain his ability. Because I tell you what, if he regains his ability, he gets double figures in both goals and assists because that's what he brings to this team. And there's no other winger in this team that 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 can produce that. And he's done that year in year out for Leicester City and won trophies doing it. So for me, um, we can't we can't um, we can't turn our nose up at someone with that type of quality. Cool. Barnes is in. Uh, Chris, we'll come to you with Kraft, who has uh, signed a new contract as well, uh, an extension for a year. What do you yeah, think? I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hashtag 25 in him. I think he's a, he's a good utility player. Uh, I think he offers depth. He offers options, um, particularly on that right-hand side and centre-back position. Um, apparently, according to Eddie Howe, ultimate professional. I know you probably can't go off that in the fact that Eddie Howe doesn't really slag any players off. Um, so even if he was awful, he probably wouldn't say so. But he seems to conduct himself pretty well. Um, he's never let us down this season when he has played. Um, yes, he's he's 29 years of age. Um, but I, I think he I think he's good for another year. You could argue that maybe he's in the you know the the Lascelles bracket um, to 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 coin that phrase again, and maybe the Wilson bracket, and that if a, a hard money offer came in for him, that we might consider it. And I wouldn't be opposed to that, but equally, I wouldn't be I wouldn't have a problem with him being in the uh, in the twenty five man squad. And I think he probably deserves his year extension because he's had a horrible injury. He's fought his way back, and like I say, whenever he's played, he hasn't he hasn't uh, let us down. So for me. Good squad utility player and probably replaces the likes of Mankio. Um, a firmer option on that right hand side. And again, as I say, potentially, you know, right centre back, maybe playing on the right of a free man centre back. So I think he gives options and uh, I wouldn't have a problem keeping him. Pete, we go to you on craft. Yeah, I keep him in the squad. <clears throat> um I wasn't <clears throat> I wasn't um I wasn't disappointed when he signed his extension. Uh, I really wasn't. Um, he can play right centre back, right back, right wing back. If we play with the back three, um, so he, he's he's very very versatile. Um, and yeah, I he offers a lot more than some other players. You know, for example, uh, the likes of Paul Dummett. Um, he offers a lot more than him. Um, Mankilio, that's already been mentioned. Um, he, he, he offers a lot more than that, and he's got good pedigree. He's got the attributes that Eddie, Eddie Howe wants. So for me, not a problem. Cool, and I'm the same. Swedish international. Uh, <laughs> happy that he signed the extension, uh, and uh, he's happy to stay and stick with us. So yeah, keep him. Uh, Lars Karius, guys, I'm going to automatically go to. So I want to get your thoughts though, but. He wants out. He, he wants to go back to Italy. His family he is set up there with a newborn baby as well. So uh, you can understand why he wants to go. His contract is out as well. So I can't see him signing. But any any concerns? Anyone want to try and keep him? No. No. <laughs> uh, and that's a no from Chris as well. Right. We move on. Let's go yeah. to your namesake, Chris. Next, let's go to Lewis Hall, whose loan contract will be coming to end, but the, the permanent uh, one will, will kick in. Um, what are you what are you doing with Lewis Hall? Um I, I'm I'm putting him in the 25 man squad. I think um I talked to you boys about it very briefly pre-show when he when he came on that cameo at the weekend against Man City. Um I saw little little moments of uh, moments of um what can I describe it as? Moments of promise. Um, you know, we, we, we've we not seen enough of Lewis Hall this season. That's up for debate and we could probably do a whole show on why that is. But, you know, for one reason or another, we've not seen enough of him. Uh, and, you know, he, he comes with a fantastic pedigree. Um, he made a really good start to his Chelsea career. We managed to snap him up, which we were really, you know, we all felt really fortunate when we did. Uh, for one reason or another, it's not worked out for him this season. But, 
you know, if if the rumours are believed to be true in that we have or we are about to trigger this deal, or we will do as long as we finish above a certain position, which hopefully we will, um, I'd have no problem with him staying. And I hope that we see a lot more of him next season. And hopefully if he gets a full pre-season under Eddie Howe in this Newcastle United side, who knows, he could be he could be the first choice left back, or at very least, you know, the, the second choice left back, um, with the view to taking over that position in, in time to come. So yeah, for me, I think he's a uh, he's a he's a he's a hashtag twenty-five. For for me, he's he's a hashtag twenty-five as well, and I agree with what William Smith is saying. Play him, play him. But Pete, your thoughts on uh, Lewis Hall. Um <clears throat> again, another easy decision for me. Um he he's look. We're talking about whether it gets um, kind of whether he hits the threshold or not. He's a Newcastle United player. Um, you know, we're we're going to finish above fifteenth this season. Um, as 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 worrying as our performances have been recently, we are finishing above fifteenth, which is what the criteria is apparently to to, to trigger that deal. Um, I think people just need to be patient with Lewis Hall. There's this demand for him to play and we all want him to play but we don't want to just chuck him into the team we want him to be when he plays for this team we want him to be ready to play for this team and if it takes a season for embedding in then i'm all for it if it means that he then plays for the next 10 years at newcastle united the one thing we've got to remember boys he hasn't moan once he hasn't come out in the press he hasn't come out and said i'm not happy i want to go back to chelsea he has been given he has been made very, very clear a plan of where his future lies at Newcastle United. And you know what? He wouldn't have signed the deal otherwise. And he probably would have asked to go back to Chelsea if that was the case. Um, I'm not worried. He'll get more minutes next season. We'll see him more in pre-season. Wouldn't we even be surprised to see him play more between now and the end of the season. Yeah. And we've got to remember, we asked the same questions of Anthony Gordon. And look where he is now. We asked the same questions of Tina Livramento. Look where he is now. There's no reason why Lewis Hall can't be in the same position. And he will be. I'm, I'm confident of that. I was buzzing when we signed him in the summer because I knew what kind of quality we, we, he was coming, we, we were getting in. We haven't seen it straight away. That's okay, but we were. Not worried. Nice one. He's in the 25-man squad, and along with him goes Tino. I don't think anyone's going to argue Tino is in their 25-man squad. Yeah, he's got to be. He's got to be. Let's move on. Uh, let's go to Nick Pope. Uh, for me, 25-man squad, anyone disagree? No, he's definitely 25-man squad material. Yeah. And maybe in the next game, uh, that will conclude this one, we might talk about uh, the goalkeeper position a bit more. Mm. Jacob Murphy. This is one that could be interesting. Jacob yeah. Murphy. Mm. Chris, we'll go to you first with Jacob Murphy. On the basis of what I'm going to say about another player that you asked me about, uh, I'm going to say 25-man squad. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because we need squad depth next season. Um, we're going to need, we're going to need, hopefully, a, a bigger and fitter squad. Uh, and I think Jacob Murphy, one thing he does provide us with is that versatility. Um, we, we, you know, we we've seen him play. Well, we've seen him fill in in a number of positions, and he, again, similar to Harvey Barnes, in that he gives us something that we don't necessarily have in abundance, uh, particularly on that right wing, uh, which I don't need to go into. But yeah, for me, I I, I think Jacob Murphy's got at least another season at Newcastle United. Um, obviously, you know, if we if we do end up bringing in a new right winger, I don't envisage Jacob Murphy being in the starting eleven. Don't get me wrong, but I think it, whenever he plays, he very rarely lets us down. Um, you know, obviously Newcastle Newcastle lads, Newcastle fans, should I say? Um, so I would have no problem with him being in the twenty five man squad personally. Nice one, Chris. Also, a reminder to anyone watching, hit that like button as well. Hit that subscribe yeah. button uh, as well. Or if you're watching this on playback. But, uh, Pete, your thoughts on uh, Jake Murphy? Yeah, an easy decision for me. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm keeping him. I'm keeping Jacob Murphy uh, for the simple reasons is that he absolutely loves the club. He never, ever moans. He could go six, seven, ten games without playing when they repeat from him. 
But when he comes in, he gives everything. He might not be at the level in a lot of those games. He might not play at the level that you want uh, your right winger to play, but he'll always come in and do a job. And he's had moments this season where he scored important goals or important assists. You go back to Villa, you go back to uh, Wolves, the ball in for, for Anthony Gordon's goal. He's got moments in him. Um, and honestly, what are we, we going to get for him? Who's going to pay? Who's going to pay a big enough fee for Jacob Murphy? With all due respect, who, who, who's going to pay that fee that's going to justify his um, uh, letting him go? He's got a contract to, what, 2027? Yeah, More like that. Like that. That's still a very long contract. Nobody's going to pay that sort of money to get him out of the club. So therefore, I, I, I genuinely think he'll see out his contract. He'll be here until yeah. twenty twenty seven. I don't see him moving anywhere. The, I, I put him in the twenty five man squad as, as well. I see. So this, it has caused some debate in the chat. Some people are saying good luck, but I would be open to if we got a decent offer. I, I, I'd consider selling. Uh, just again uh, with with uh, PSR or FFP, but uh, I want to ha- happy to keep in the the green here. Um, next one, Miggy. Uh, I'll go straight away here. I think it's time to say good luck to to Miggy. Uh, uh, unbelievable last season. Hasn't hit that dizzy heights at this season. Um, I thought we were going, he was going to go in the summer to Saudi. I expect he might go either to Saudi or back to the States uh, in the summer. So I'm saying good luck to Miguel Mira. Pete. Um, yeah, Miggy needs to go. Uh, we, need, we need the funds. We need the funds from him. Um, the best time would have been last summer. Uh, we need to sell him on. We need to move him on because we need a top level right winger to come in in the summer. That's for me is a hugely priority priority position. We need quality in that area and um, that can produce week in week out. Um, and unfortunately, although he's had some purple patches um, and for all his good running, um, it's just not quite enough for where we want to go. So for me, um, he needs to move on. Um, and good luck to him. Chris, thoughts of Miggy? Yeah, it's really sad because I really like Miggy Armadon and, um, you know, he he literally will run into the ground for you. But unfortunately, his lack of quality in key areas, it it just kills us, I'll be honest. It just kills us. Um, In the modern game now, for me, I think the bare minimum is that you want to play who can use both feet. And unfortunately, Miggy can't use both feet and it's to our detriment at times. Yes, um, as you boys already alluded to, he had a, a really nice purple patch last season. That would have been the time to get rid of him. I do get why we kept hold of him. Um, I understand why. But, yeah, it, it, I think his time at the club's come to an end now. I think, um, you know, let's be honest, boys, we, you know, we'll look back in four, five, six years and is Miggy Armour ever going to come in the conversation when it comes to top wingers for Newcastle United? He's just not. Um Unfortunately, he's he's not quite at that level. He's brought us some fantastic moments, and like I say, I could never criticise him for his work rate. But yeah, it's time to go. And as you mentioned, PSR and FFP, that's where I think that that's where you're getting a big chunk of your money from Miguel Armadon, and hopefully we can get anything north of eighteen million. And let's not forget, he's a uh, he's 30, 30 years old with two years left on his contract. So now is the time definitely to cash in before you yeah. get buttons for him. <laughs> Exactly. Right, is is in the red in the good luck. Uh <laughs> Joe Willock. Uh for me, I'm putting him Joe Willock in the 25 man squad. Uh 24 years old, says still has three years left in his contract. Or uh anyone not keeping uh Joe Willock. No. No. No, I think he's got to go in the 25 man squad. Although I have to say. The reason for my hesitation or slight hesitation is if we were to be offered a really, 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 really big sum, I think the club would consider it. Um, mm. Not that I want to see Joe go because I, I think he's he's going to be, he's got so much more growth in him. I think he's only going to get better. And again, to coin a phrase I used before, he offers something in the midfield that we don't have in abundance. Um, he drives us up that pitch. He's full of energy. And I think he is only going to get better. The only way that I see him leaving is if somebody comes in with a mega offer for him and it might make the club think about it. But 
Um, I don't want to see him go, and I think, yeah, he's definitely deserving of that 25-man squad. Cool. Let's move on. Joe Willick is in. Um, Mark Gillespie. Well, that's, we'll try and speed it up a small bit as well. Mark Gillespie, for me, good luck. And I know, Chris, you have a valid point on, on keeping him, but the club shop can survive without him. <laughs> uh, well, I'll jump in before Pete goes to him, but uh, before Pete has his say, but um, for me, I'd keep him. Um, and I know everyone thinks I'm mad saying that, but I would I'd keep him because I think he's on a very, very low wage. I won't go into it in massive detail. I think he's on a very, very low wage. Um, I think he probably brings a lot off the pitch. And I keep referring to the Man City model where they've got Scott Carson in, who's I think he's like 41 or something. Mark Gillespie is not going to kick a ball for Newcastle in any 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 time soon, unless, of course, there's a huge keeper crisis. But as you know, you need at least three, if not maybe four, goalkeepers on the books. And having someone like him in, who's on very, very low wages and brings you something off the pitch, it would I would rather keep him on, say, I'm assuming he's on maybe five, six, seven grand a week than bring in a new goalkeeper, a potential third choice goalkeeper even, who is on 15 grand a week and maybe starts causing a few ructions in the dressing room or people don't like him or something like that. And I know you shouldn't keep people because you think people like them. But he's settled. He's not going to cause any disturbance. He knows his place in the squad. He knows he's probably just there to keep the goalkeepers warm, the other two. Um, so for me, I think I, I, I personally would keep him because it saves having to go out and buy another replacement. That's the way I see it on Mark Gillespie. So I'd have him in the 25-man personally. Zero appearances, zero goals, obviously. 100% though, <laughs> and zero saves, zero and everything. But Pete, you have the cast and vote here. I'm not keeping Gillespie. <clears throat> not a chance. Um, for me, <clears throat> for me, it's a it's a waste of it's a waste of a position. And and I'm 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 saying that for the absolute opposite that what you said, Chris, <clears throat> is that I think personally having Mark Gillespie in this team actually stunts the growth of a potential academy player coming through. I would much rather academy player, a young, hungry academy player, come through. Um, that's chomping at the bit to be that next goalkeeper and push the other two goalkeepers to come through than have a goalkeeper that that really isn't very good. Um, that, that Yeah, he's a, he's a draw the Newcastle fan, all the rest of it, but he's, he's not good. He isn't. And I'd much rather a goalkeeper that's aspiring to be better in the squad than, than that, personally. Um, and you, know, you mentioned the Scott Carson thing. Scott Carson's a coach. He's a goalkeeping coach. That's his actual role. He's then added on as a goalkeeper in addition to that because he used to play. But for me, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not keeping Gillespie. He, he needs to go. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about what I was going to say uh, later on. Cool. Let's go uh, to Ellie Anderson. Uh, for me, Ellie Anderson, twenty-five man squad. But this is a make or break season next season for Elliot Anderson for me. And um, because we can cash in on him as well, they call it PSR, the uh, FFP, uh, because it comes through the academy, he has to do something. Spect- I know he's unlucky this season because of injuries, because he's flying in preseason, but next season and these next 10 games as well mm-hmm. uh, in the league, he, he has to start producing something. Anyone have to say on Elliot Anderson? Go on, Pete. It's what there's nothing much to say. It's a no-brainer. He has to be in the squad. Um, he had a great preseason, lots of potential. Um, bad injury, getting a back injury the way he did, um, and being out for the period of time he is. Um, it's going to take him the rest of this season just to get back up to speed. Um, unfortunately, but um, yeah, I think he's got. Uh, I think he's got a bright future. In what position though, remains to be seen because he is a left winger. By trade, um, he's been kind of repackaged into the left side of a, a midfield three. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see how Eddie, Eddie Howe or another manager in the future develops him. Chris Anthony on Ellie Anderson. No, I agree with you boys. I think I think definitely twenty five man squad. Um, so yeah, for me, I, I'm more than happy with Ellie Anderson. But I, I do kind of see where you're coming from, Daz, and that you know. Um, he, you know, he, he really needs to start up and things, but yeah, Pete's right, terrible injury. Um, and if he stays fit, I think he, I think he, you know, I think he can be a really, really important squad player for us. We saw how good he was in pre season, 
Um, so there's no reason why he can't come in and do a job for us next season. Okay, that's on to Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne, uh, for me, he's in the 25-man squad. Um, but he's not an automatic starter. He's a, he's a, he's. Cause then we have a lot of kind of squad players in and in that like okay a different side I know but we've got Kraft, Lascelles, and Burn. Um, they're building up. But this was you need someone with injuries. But twenty five man squad for me, Dan Burn. Pete, I. Oh, no, go go for it, Chris. Chris. Oh no, me. I was just going to say no. I agree. I agree. Simple, easy one for me. 25-man squad. Wouldn't start them every week, but yeah, 25-man squad all day. Yeah. Um, I, I, won't, I won't be getting rid of Dan Byrne. Um, I, won't be, I won't be selling him. Um, I think as a leader and all the rest of it, I think someone just put it in the chat, actually, um, about being sort of a similar role to Dummit. Yeah. Um, oh, Mr. Juan Aldum. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, Genius the one out Um, absolutely right. Uh, make him our, our sort of new dummy in that position where he doesn't play every week, but he still can have the influence in the uh, in the changing room, uh, in on the training pitch, all the rest of it. Um, for me, the one thing that I just want next season is that he's not a regular starter. I just don't want him starting games for Newcastle United. For me, that just shows that we've st stood still. If Dan Byrne is still starting games for Newcastle United, um, coming on and seeing out games, fine, no problem, but not starting football matches for Newcastle United. We have to move on from this now, and I hope that Eddie Howe's seen enough this season to make that decision himself. Okay, let us move on. Um, I'm going to skip Lucas De Bully, uh, who was in loan. Uh, uh, Bernie or uh, Hamilton or something like that in Scotland. Uh, so we'll move on. I'm going to go to, to Longy. Let's go to Sean Longstaff. I am saying Sean Longstaff. I would look to sell Sean Longstaff. I'd look. I, I, I'd take a. I'd take an offer. Uh, I was going to say that. Do we not in. just? Do we not just stick the ball in the yellow section? We not just stick him in there. We can. He's gone yeah. in there. Done. Oh, is he? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, just no. thought, at least we can fill some names in, in that yellow section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's use it. Sean Longstaff, lads, what, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm going to let P start this one. <laughs> I, I'm still looking at uh, Tom Dixon, our, 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 our main man, the spanner. Um, he's gone sure good luck. Uh, he's catching up here. What is going on, my man? Ooh. Really, Tom? Wow. I'd be, um, I'd be, he's obviously catching up. Good to see you, Tom, in the chat. But uh, yeah, I'd like to know his thoughts on that as to why. I think that's a, that's an interesting one, um, one for discussion for sure. But uh, um, where are we at? Sorry, um, Sean Longstaff. Sean Longstaff. Um, for me, um, I, I'm, I'm not asked about Sean Longstaff. I think, I think I'm quite happy for him to go. I, I, look, let, let's let's be clear. Eddie Howe said he's got he's had an ankle injury and all the rest of it. And that's fine. That's fine. He's playing with an ankle injury. Respect it. He's doing bits for the club. Um, he's, he's putting himself in, in, in harm's way. Um, I'll just go back to the point. Fingers crossed we've got the likes of Joe Linton, Joe Willock, Bruno Gomez, Sandro Tonali in that midfield. That's four as it is. Then you've got Elliot Anderson, who's not going anywhere. Then you've got Lewis Miley. That's six midfielders. For me, I think one may have to go to supplement another midfielder going in. It just makes sense that Sean Longstaff is the guy to be sold. And uh, at what, 25 years old? There's still a value there. There is still a team that would be uh, crazy enough to pay 15 to 20 million for him. Um, mm. And if they're willing to do that, I would be saying... Thank you for your service, um, but that's just me. Um, I, I, I would, I would want him gone. Um, I just think Eddie Howe's going to keep him. Eddie Howe likes him, and uh, yeah. But I, 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 I don't think he's. Uh, yeah, I'm putting in the red as well. I, 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 I don't think he's going anywhere. But I, I, I put him in the red, and I think a few in the chat have said that as well. And to answer Harpel's question, how long is the spreadsheet? This spreadsheet can go on all night. We also have another game <laughs> after the spreadsheet, so stick around for that. Um, <laughs> Chris, are you are you keeping uh, um, Sean Longstaff or are you getting rid of him? Um, <clears throat> I think Sean Longstaff 
I think Sean Longstaff is certainly on the list of players who could potentially leave. So I agree with you boys. Um, he's probably near the top of that list. Um, so I'll put him in the same bracket as your Jamal Lascelles, as your Callum Wilsons. In that I think if a decent enough offer come in, and as Pete said, if someone's mad enough to pay upwards of fifteen million for them, I think I think the club would listen. I could see Sean Longstaff joining like a Crystal Palace, someone like that, who you know would need a midfield reinforcement. And Sean Longstaff on his day can be a really good player. Um, and yeah, the injury thing is a, is a, you know that 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 is a credit to him if he is playing through injury and that's probably why as as pete mentioned before that's probably why eddie howe absolutely adores him because that you know he will he will put his body on the line for the course uh i just think technic uh technical ability wise he's not at the same level as the others um which is time and time again found out so if we were to bring in a new central midfielder uh and we could get say 10 15 million for sean longstaff or maybe more i i, I think it's a no-brainer that we get rid of him so for now I've got no problem with him being in that uh, good luck section. Cool, he's in. Bruno, I put him in the 25 man. No one's going to disagree yeah. with me there. So I'm moving on. Um, Bruno, all day long. Joe White. Get him in the yellow for uh, me. I'd say the, the yellow. yellow. Yeah, I think the yellow, mate. Let's go. Let's go. Um, on, uh, on sorry, yeah. Dad. You know what I'd like for Joe White is that I, I would like. I'd like to see him go to a go to a team on loan in like the championship. Hmm. I'm, I'm not saying top end of the championship, like middle to bottom, where he's going to play regular football um, and really be able to hone his craft at that level. Because if he has a good, real good loan spell at a team in the championship, that may well then give him the the opportunity in 2025 to come back in pre season for 25 26 and and actually show what he's about. Um, I just don't think he's ready yet. I think he's had some, is it all right touches, all right moments on the pitch, but that's during an injury crisis. I just don't think he's going to be uh, in the squad or or, or really uh, around the first team coming off the bench at any point next season. I would expect that not to be the case. And you don't want him just sitting on the bench rotting. You'd rather him just go out and play. Cool. That's it. We've made a decision of Joe White in the yellow. Alex Murphy, I'm sticking Alex Murphy in the... In, uh, I'd like to see him go out and loan because I don't think... He, like he's He played a goal United, uh, but he's he's he got a few minutes uh, this season. Uh, I think I'd like to see him get regular football and again, towards the top of the championship, he's, he's well capable of, of that. Just to, just for himself more than anything else. Uh but will it? Will Eddie Howe want to keep him around? I'm just just to kind of be a squad filler, and or is it the case that he gets more game time next season? I think I, I think alone is is the best for, for Alex Murphy. Completely agree, does. Yeah, I I think personally, I think Alex Murphy um, is set up to be Dan Burns' replacement um, to go out on loan. For a season, Dan Byrne play, has his last season at Newcastle. Next season, Dan Byrne moves on. Alex Murphy comes in. It's a nice transition. It just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so for me, that's how I see Alex Murphy's trajectory. And uh, well, how what, how old would he be at that point this time next year? Uh, 20, 20, so 20 he's months? going to. Be, it could be twenty. Uh, yeah, twenty 20. going on twenty one because uh, mm-hmm. his birthday is is kind of in the close season, I think. So that's a nice, uh, yeah, nice transition. That is great age coming in. Great age, great age. Uh, but coming into the first team at that point and actually playing games, that'll be a really nice, nice um, transition. <clears throat> cool. I've took the liberty of putting Lewis Miley in the twenty five man. I don't think anyone's going to disagree. Yep. Uh, let's move on. Alfie Harrison. Um, I think he goes into the twenty five man, uh, and um, if he's going to get some game time, otherwise I'd stick him out in loan. Uh, but I, th- I think he he'll go in the twenty five. But we haven't really seen anything of, of him though. That's, that's the thing mm. for us. Mm. I think I think I think he'll go on loan. If I'm honest, uh, I think he is one for the future. Uh, what I wouldn't want, I suppose, is to kind of see him stay and just not get a kick. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously Eddie will have a look at him pre-season, but does I mean, you know, I, 
I do see your, your logic in the in the 25 man, and I suppose it depends how good he looks uh, when he's in and amongst uh, the big boys, so to speak. But yeah, I mean, it's similar for me, very similar to Joe White and Alex Murphy, and that maybe a season elsewhere playing, you know, proper professional football week in, week out with other mm. senior players that could really bring the best out of him. But again, it, it kind of should, it, well, we need to see what level he's at first before we, you know, we make a decision. So it's green or yellow for me. Actually, I did uh, earlier, I didn't save it and I had to redo it again. But earlier on, I did have his contract in there. I think it's up to 2026. So he has like two years with us um, or two and a half when he joined. And so he has that to make his mind up as well on us as well as us on, on him. Yeah. But yeah. Pete, your your thoughts on uh, Alfie Harrison? Yeah, we, we talked about it when he signed. Um, he The reason why he signed for us is because he's been given um, a platform. He's been given a, a route uh, into the first team. So for me, he goes in the 25-man squad. Um, now, for me, it's up to him to prove himself. He He's come to Newcastle United from Man City. Man City churn out top-level players. And speaking to LB, he rated him. He said he's a, he, he, a good player. Good player. Could have, could have found his route into the Man City team. But Man City, like Cole Palmer, for example, you have to be elite and elite all the time to be able to get into that team so he wants to go to a team where he can see a pathway he sees that in Newcastle United for me I think the preseason is massive for him mm. and I wouldn't be surprised that between now and then the season if he's not already training with the first team I would imagine he will start to do that um, I actually think he's got a really good route into this first team his ability for the bits that we've seen Looks like he's the perfect player to come in and facilitate this team. Um, you know, he's his attacking ability, he's positive, likes to get the ball forward, loves to take on a man. He will excite this crowd for sure. Um, and offer us something different creative and creative wise. And um, for me, yeah, I'm I'm having him in my 25. Uh, we need more players like this in this team. Um, and I would much rather an existing player that's been around for far too long moved on to facilitate him in cool cool uh on to his namesake but first name harrison ashby uh who's on loan at swansea uh, not getting an awful lot of game time it has to be said a uh, 22 um um and he also has has trips and tino ahead of him as well uh, i think probably another loan uh for harrison ashby yeah, I think he's in the same. I think he's in the same boat as uh, Alex Murphy. I think, like Pete said, Alex Murphy's probably going to come in and be the Dan Byrne replacement. I think, I think Harrison Ashby could end up being the Emil Kraft replacement when Emil Kraft's last year runs out. I think he could then be the understudy at right back, possibly for Tino Livramento. Um, I I don't see him staying in and around the first team next season. So, I, I for me, I think he'd go in the yellow section. Pete, anything else on Harrison Ashby? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. If we had the chance to sell him, I would. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't see a pathway for Harrison Ashby at Newcastle United. Um, I just don't. Um, and, you know, yes, he's had a lot of injuries at Swansea. Uh, but for the games that I have seen Swansea play and the little clips that I've seen uh, over the course of the season, he's been okay. Um, so for that, uh, I, I think he's going to have. In order to get a pathway to, to this to this first team, I think he's going to need a monster loan next season. I think he's going to have to perform out of his skin <clears throat> to be able to be in a position to go right. I deserve to be in this first team. Um, we need to be ruthless. There's no point in keeping a player in this squad in, in and around this team and on a contract with us if he's not going to play or there's not a vision of him getting into this first team um i was really excited about when we signed him i hadn't seen a lot of him but heard really good things but for me he's gonna have to have a monster monster loan next season if he's gonna be if he's gonna have a future so for me i'd have probably had him in the red but have i'm more than happy to, for him to be in the yellow providing that he really hits the ground running next season Grant, we'll agree so it's in the orange, I think, uh, between the three of us. Uh, right, let's move on uh, and let's go to Mr. Ryan Fraser in the red. Uh, Southampton can buy him. Um, I, anyone disagree? 
No. He's 30 years old as well. He's going to he's yeah. going to get us a bit of money this season. He is. Southampton, I've got a couple of lads that I know um, I used to work with that mad Southampton fans, they love him. The club loves him. He wants to stay. He's going to Southampton, regardless of whether they go up or not. And I believe they will go up. Um, for me, yeah, I think we're going to recoup, even if it's a couple million, few million. Hey, I'll take that all day long. Cool. We're all agreed on that. Right, Fraser? Gone. Uh, Isaac Hayden. Uh, he, he, there's no way back for, for Isaac Hayden at, at uh, Newcastle. He's at QPR the moment uh he's still got a contract till 2026 he's 20 he's going to be 29 years old um has to be read anyone disagree no, I don't, no. I don't <laughs> yeah i don't know if you've uh, seen the video of him uh, uh after the game against sunderland for qpr where he's yeah. he's shitting on sunderland i did love i did love that it is, uh, <laughs> he, he proper loves the club bless him but yeah, yeah it's a good um, guy yeah. We, to be fair, we need to get his wages off the wage bill more than anything. Just yeah. Needs to go. yeah, he's he's uh, he's red or yellow for me. Ideally red, but if we can't sell him permanently, he he, he will definitely be loaned he's out. Done. He's not gonna he's not gonna yeah. rot at Newcastle. I can't see that. Yeah. Cool. Jeff Henrik, I took the pleasure of putting him in the red column. He's also out of contract, so we won't get into for Oh, uh, he's hold on a second, Dan. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. Pete. Oh, go on. Hold Take the on a second. <laughs> Jeff Hendrick, you've got to go through Chris first, surely. Yeah, I mean, come on. He, he's got to, he's got to have the final say on this. <laughs> go on, do your worst, yeah. Chris. The worst, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what? Big Jeff. Um <laughs> What did, what, did I, what did I affectionately call him? I had a nickname for him. I can't remember what it was. But um, Jeff Dog. Was it? Oh, no, J Dog. J Dog. J Jeff Dog. Um, but yeah, he, he's not going to get a new contract, is he, sadly? Um, but I, I think he, I think Jeff's, Jeff's had enough of those 50, 55 grand a week now. I think it's time to uh, to let him, let him loose and uh, see, see where he ends up. Let him loose. Yeah. If he ends up anywhere, he just retires. He ends up anywhere. Uh, or League of Ireland, maybe. Um, right, <laughs> if they'd have him. I don't know if they would. Uh, look, at we're going to Car uh, Grand Cruel. Um, for me, it's another loan. Uh, or sell him. I, I, I don't know. I, I, so far, it hasn't worked out. Maybe another loan uh, might be the, the safer option. He's, he's 19. Pete, we'll go to you. I'm sorry, boys. I'm being ruthless. Uh, sell him on, move him on. Um, again, um, two really bad loans. Um, some of it not being his fault, but I'm not seeing the things that I'm watching. I'm not seeing it. You know, when you need to see something from a player that makes you think, you know what? Yes, he's got something there. Yeah. Like we like we do with Minter. You see little moments, little yeah. clips, little yeah, things yeah. of him where you think, you know what? He could do that in a black and white shirt. I'm just not seeing it for a grand koal. Now, yeah, the, he hasn't really been playing. He hasn't really been involved. But even when he was, even when he was up in Scotland, when he has been playing, he, uh, just I'm, I'm not seeing it. So I, I am being ruthless here. And I'm, you know, people may not agree and that's absolutely fine. I'm, 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 I'm just being ruthless in this. I need to see something from a player. I need to see something from the player. And maybe for his own sake, move him on to a club where he's just going to go and play regular football. You know, let him go and play regular football, even if it's going back to Australia. Go back to Australia, go and play regular football, be happy, move on from that. Um, bring him but, on the trip, though, uh, maybe. <laughs> boost boost uh, uh, the, the trip to Australia. Maybe that might be an option for him. Um if, if the season in in Holland is over at the same time, it should but be. But should be. Imagine, Chris, you have the deciding vote on Garan Coral's future at Newcastle. How's that feel? Oh, feels feels um feels like a lot a lot of a uh, lot of responsibility does. But no, I'm I'm. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna nick one of Pete's um philosophies. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say he's in the he's in the Harrison Ashby bracket. I think because to give him the benefit of the doubt, he's had two poor loans. Whether you can blame the player or whether you can blame the club, I don't know. 
But I, I do get where Pete's coming from saying get rid because we haven't seen those moments of brilliance really, have we? I think he scored a really good goal when he was when he was up in Scotland once. Um, but <laughs> other than that, we've not really seen much. But I, I do think if, if he gets the right club, um, there's no reason why he couldn't wow us. And I agree with you, Daz. Get him in the pre-season. Let's have a look at him. Um, but I think he will he will go out on loan regardless. I just hope it's a good loan. And I think he is in the last chance to leave. Cool. Jamal Lewis, uh, who's on loan at uh, <coughs> Watford uh, and playing playing a few games. Uh, but I think cashing him now, he's, was he, he's uh, 26. Time to cash in. He's got one year left in his contract as well. All cashing in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. he's in Get the right. Get whatever red. you can. He's in Get the whatever you can. Uh, and Yakoba Minta is our last one that we're going to talk about because we're not going to talk about that we could be here all night oh, otherwise. Uh, uh, so what are you doing with Minta, Chris? I'm going to come to you first with Minta. Oh, it's an interesting one. This very interesting one. I think for me, the big, the big one for me is what we do with the right wing position. Uh, if we were to go in and sign a top, top class right winger. I'd probably loan him out again, give him another loan, even if he stays at Feyenoord, because he's doing well at Feyenoord, he's settled, he's playing Champions League football, as we've spoken about previously. Um, I think I think probably a loan, if I'm being honest. Has he got the potential to be a first-team player? Absolutely. But is it right now? I'm just not so sure. Let's have a look at him a pre-season, so it, it, it's not do or die. But I think... I think I'm probably aiming to wear towards yellow. Um, so putting them in the, the dev loan section. Um, one, have a look at them pre season, but I want them to be playing first team football week in, week out. I mean, Daz, um, how old how old is uh, Dan Cooper Minter? Is he 19? He's 19 going on 20. Yeah. Yeah, I just he, he's clearly an exciting prospect, and I think he's going to be he's going to be some player. You know, we forked out seven million up front for him, and then sent him on loan to final who were happy to take him, and they've been you know trusting him this season. Had a bit of a wobble a few weeks ago. I think a few people were questioning his attitude or questioning you know um, his his um, decision making in terms of when he's in front of goal. But as Pete mentioned before, we've seen some we've seen some moments of of quality, and he's done it on the big stage. Um, so for me, I'm saying yellow, but let's have a look at him in pre-season. And who knows? I'm not saying he can't get in the in the 25-man squad, but I think it'll probably be a loan. Pete, your thoughts on Minta? I know you didn't want to bring it back in, in January. You wanted him yeah. to stay at Feyenoord then, but your thoughts now for the summer? Um, I really want Eddie Howe to have a look at him in pre-season. I really do. I want him to get plenty of minutes in pre-season with this. Um, because if he has a good preseason, I would be having him in the squad. However, I don't want this to de to deter from us getting a right winger. We need a, a ready-made first choice, top level right winger coming in the summer with Miggy going out. So I would be quite happy if Minter produces the goods to be a backup to that right winger, an option off the bench. And then you have Murphy as your third choice, that floater who can play left and right um, and just do the job within the squad. That's ide that In an ideal situation, that's what I would love next season to be. Minter being that backup, that moment maker where he comes off the bench and just kind of produces something that wins us a game or gets us back in it or something like that. Um, however, um, you know, if his preseason's not like that, I would send him straight back, straight back to PSV, and just say, "Go, go, do what you did last season final, again." Yeah. Uh, a final, sorry. Um, um, go back and do exactly what you did last season again, mm. and hopefully, saying to them as part of the loan deal, play, play him more, give him more starts, play him, give him more minutes, um, because. He's already established there. He knows the culture. He knows the culture of the club. He knows how the club works and programs. Um, and it, it would just be seamless. We've already made the mistake with Garan Kowal, like we talked about. We don't want to make that mistake with Yakuba Minta. I'd much rather him go back to that club, who would probably be more than happy to take him and do the same again. So for me, yeah, um, that's kind of the boat that I'm in. So for me... 
look, put him in, put him in the yellow for now, just because I think that was probably this, or, or, or I, I'm kind of going with Chris saying the yellow, but that I'm just kind of sharing my vision of what I would like to see from the <laughs> winter potentially. Yeah. Well, uh, if yellow and, and red makes orange, it is green and yellow make blue because uh, we're, we're kind of in, <laughs> in between two camps there. But yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to stick him here for for now. But yeah, I, I agree hundred percent what you're saying, Pete. I, I would like to actually put him here myself. I think, uh, and I think we all would if if uh, if we can see see something with him in the season. Right, that it's only Buzz. part one. Part one is yeah. Go for Sorry, it, mate. Just to add in, Toon Gamer, because I didn't know who he was referring to here. I didn't know whether he meant Minter or somebody else. He said he's read some reports that a couple <laughs> of clubs have, uh, have reported to be willing to pay twenty to twenty five million for Minter in the summer. So I thought I'd throw that in as a as a conversation breaker. If someone came in and went twenty million, we want the Yankuba Minter. Do you cash in? Does that mean that we can spend like eighty million on someone else? Potentially. Newcastle will sell for that. Newcastle yeah, would sell. Well. Um, because we're, we're unlock FFP. Yeah, if someone came in for twenty twenty five million, they they would sell. Um, and you know what? A lot of the big, a lot of the big clubs do that. They've got a player that they would like to, like like Cole Palmer, for example. Go back to it. He was ready to play in the first team. Pep Guardiola said, "You're going to play more minutes this season. Play." But he wants to be playing every minute of every game, and that's why he went to Chelsea. And they ended up cashing in on him. Um, teams do it. If someone comes in with twenty five. You can't. You, Newcastle can't say no to that with, with the financial situations where they are. They just can't. In, in, insert a clause into the contract as well that we could buy him back at a, an agreed price, or that we first refuse or something like that as well. I'm sure could be built into that, so we're not yeah, yeah. completely yeah. gone out out of the picture. So yeah, okay, that it brings part one to a conclusion. This was the outcome, as you can see on screen. But I'm going to stop sharing screen now and introduce the second part of the show because we're not done yet because the second part is something new and it's going to be called squad depth so we're we'll keeping with the the squid game squad game uh team and we're going to go for part two so take it away pete for part two all right let me Ooh. just get up on the screen one second Present. oh Here's the here's the squad. So we've got the uh, the home kit and we've got the uh, the Sally Green um, as, as the alternative. So look for for for, for you guys, um, we had the squad for this season. Um, how do you want to work this? How do you want to put it on screen, Daz? Because uh, I can work it however you want. Yeah. So let's let's put up uh, twenty two players or or. And we don't have to put up 22 players. Let's leave gaps for where we want to buy a replacement. Uh, so you. let's say, yeah, you put Nick Nick Pope in goal for, for the, one of the teams. Um, and whether then uh, the second team, whether uh, we, whether we put back. no one in goal and we need to buy one or, or work it that way. Maybe, yeah. as you just said, does maybe it'd be a good idea to have your start in 11. So we say the start of the season, that's what we want it to look like with gaps potentially. Uh, and then on the right hand side is the backup eleven, um, but people who we've obviously said we want to keep in the squad. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. Okay. So, oh, one second. I've got that player there. Um, yeah. So we've got player twenty nine there. Okay. Um, so he he's the replacement in that squad. There. So, look, let's go for the first team first. We know we've got Sven Botman in there. We know we've got Fab Shaw. We know we've got Jamal Lascelles in that position. Dan Byrne, albeit not first choice. Trippier. We'll just go through. Kieran Trippier. Kraft. Tino. So, we know we're stacked in that position. Um, target. We said no. Is that right? Yeah, we said target. We said, yeah, so we're selling targets. <clears throat> we did. Okay. Um, Sandro Tonali, Joe Willock, Elliot Anderson, Sean Longstaff. Did we, we are we leaving no, him out? Gone, didn't we? I think we said no. Yeah. We, yeah. we sold him. We sold yeah. him. Moved him on. Okay. 
Joe so we kept Louis and we kept Joe, yeah. Right, with Harvey Barnes, Jacob Murphy, um, we saw me. Oh, yeah, we did. We did saw Miggy and uh, we saw Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> all, all our strikers on the pitch there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, let me just move some of these players up. So we've got the positions here. Mm. Okay. Then what we can do is um, we can put a potential replacement in there. So player 29. I'll, I'll, I'll change that in just a second because what we can do is... Um, can you can you change it to question mark, Pete? Does it let you change? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. 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 In the squad, let me go back down. Um, let me just start there. That's why I come in. Um, let's put a new player. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, we all agreed we need a new goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we got in, in in the last round. We we got rid of two, so uh, we definitely need a new keeper. Yeah, we do. We do. So we got rid of three, actually. Boys, this is the squad that we that, that we put together. So yeah. for all all of this all of the spreadsheet, this is how the team lo would look or the squad would look for next season. Now we've already added in there that we feel that we need another goalkeeper in there. We've we've, we've talked about Dravka and Karius moving on. Um, so. I think it's really obvious where we can see the gaps. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. I think for me, Pete, um, Daz, I don't know if you agree with this, starting on the left, I think personally that Dan Byrne should move behind Sven Botman. And I think that highlights that we need a new left back. But what, Chris, wouldn't you want a new centre-back coming in there? Um, yes, but I don't know whether... I don't know whether it would be the right centre back, and then you potentially. I, I, I suppose, Pete, you could group those centre backs together, couldn't you? You I suppose because Fab Shah can play on the left of the of yeah. the four. Yeah. We've seen him do that. Uh, Jamal Lascelles would predominantly play on the right. Mm -hmm. um, Sven Botman, we know, can play on the right. Dan Byrne, preferably on the left, with him being predominantly left footed. However, Sven Botman can use his can use his right foot. I mean. We definitely need at least one centre back. I, I know, I know what you're saying with Dan Byrne. I'm not what you're saying because natural that, that's kind of like his natural position in there, and mm -hmm. then you've got that defensive cover. But I, I don't know. And look, Daz, like I don't know what you think about this. Like we've seen Dan Byrne in pockets play yeah. in this position, and he hasn't been good. He no, really, no. really hasn't. And yeah. I, I personally, and people in the chat might think differently. I personally wouldn't be comfortable with having Dan Byrne as a backup for Sven Botman. I, I think it's so important this summer to get in a new centre-back, whether, whether it's a left-sided centre-back, right-sided, can play both. I think, honestly, from, from, the, from recent performances, these two need to be put under pressure <clears throat> with a genuinely good centre-back that can come in and actually get them to raise their game. But I, I might be wrong. I don't know what you boys think. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think yeah, you, the three in the two centre backs position, I'd like a, a three like really solid, as in Shar, Botman, and a new new player to come in. And then, as, as Chris said, Shar can let's say Botman was injured, Shar can move up, and then new player to sit, sit in with Shar. Or may, maybe maybe that player could is comfortable in, in either either of the centre back positions. But, but that'd be my core three that I'd work with. And rotate if necessary as well. And then you have Lascelles who can fill in, and it's Kraft who can fill in. And I, yeah, I don't really want Dan Byrne filling in because uh, it hasn't always worked out. But uh, so he's 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 a bit floating a bit um, between between the rows. If we're really stuck, then he, he could help out. But it's rare we'll probably be down that well unless it's an injury season like this season. Hmm. Hmm. I felt like you were saying there was a chance then, Pete, with uh, Jared Brampweet. I felt like you were saying it. Mate, I, I, look, I'm, I'm not paying 80 million. <laughs> I'm not paying the 80 million that Everton won. I'd rather yeah. them get relegated than pay 50 or 40. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look, um, look, I, it, it, he, he, he's, he's the ideal centre-back that you want because he can play right and left. Yeah. 
So yeah, it, yeah. it's basically saying what, what we're all saying is that we want that versatility. Mm -hmm. uh, you've yeah. talked about craft. Daz, you're absolutely right. I've put Tonali here and I've, ju I've just, because I can't see the comments all the time, but I've just clicked off and I've seen one or two people say that he plays on the right-hand side. He can. He can play here. He can play there. It doesn't really matter. If we put him here, there's a gap there. If you put him here, there's a gap there. It, it, just, I'll put him in the middle just to, uh, <laughs> just to appease him. <laughs> So, so the, the idea behind behind the, this part of the show is, is to identify the players that we need that we, we we're missing. We need to go after. So we're saying, uh, and I'll, I'll just make a note for myself here. We're saying we need a goalkeeper first off. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the first one we, we need to go after. We need yeah. uh, a, a centre back uh, that, that can cover either either yeah well to cover in either positions maybe. Uh, that's what we need. Uh, so that that's two players we need uh, in the summer. Right. I'm gonna start adding here so um and put new center back okay um right let, let's leave that there for now i've got a few players that i've added to the team so um where would they be there they are new center back there we go so i'll put them in saudi green so we can tell the difference yeah there we go. Um, where are we going next, Daz? Uh, I, I, I think. Um, okay. Well, are we are we happy to do? do we want to bring in a, a left back, or are we are we all confident that uh, Lewis Hall can make that position his own, or Alex Murphy could slot in there as well, or uh, or will we move on further up the pitch and look come back and look at that position later? Me personally. I, I I would like to see a new left back. Um, even if we even if we look at that right hand side, I mean we've got there, we've got Emil Kraft, we've got Trippier, we've got Livermento. So you could argue that we need three solid ones on the left hand side as well. Like I don't, I, you know, ideally if you could bring in a left centre back, Pete, this could answer your question. If we could bring in a a, um, a left back who is comfortable playing left centre back, wouldn't that be perfect? Um, you know, that, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? So that then we can focus maybe predominantly on a, a right centre back to kind of you know be be that other back up, um, or one that could play both. I mean, that would be the ideal, wouldn't it? But um, for me, I would like to see a new left back come in, um, certainly to challenge Lewis Hall, um, or at least provide a little bit of cover because if we're going to lose Jamal Lewis and we're going to lose Matty Target and we're going to lose Paul Dummy. I think we probably do need. Uh, oh yeah, here he is. Here he is. No messing around. No messing around. Yeah, there you go. I think we can safely put him in, Bring can't in. we? I, I think we will go for him. I really do. Someone like him, like oh. I, look, I, I'm, I look, just for argument's sake, for people potentially getting on our backs with this, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out. But I'll put it on there for a reason. Uh, is that I think, yeah, um, I, I do think you, you, you're right. Um, someone that can play. Uh, well, if you're so going to do that, Pete, can you please put uh, Mar Mardamash really in goal for us as well as that? that uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, yeah, that, that is that is a really good question, to be fair. Um, we, we are going to need one, uh, we are going to need a, a new uh, a new goalkeeper for sure. And, uh, but doesn't, but doesn't that look better, Pete? Doesn't that look better now? You put that left back in, you put the left back in, and you put the centre back in, and then you put a goalie in, and all of a sudden you're going, defence looks all right there. Defence looks so fine. How, yeah. I've, how I've done it is that like the left back who's going to start is there. I mean, I'm going to put that there because that's how I think. The back up there, and then the third choice is here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it here. This will be interesting. This yeah. one here. That'd be interesting, but we'll talk about that another time. Uh, yeah, I think that's maybe how it's going to work there, uh, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just to, so just then, to throw a spanner in the works. Uh, sorry, Daz, just dead quick. Just to throw a spanner in the works. Uh, are we are we confident that two goalkeepers will be enough for the season, or do you think it will be an academy goalkeeper if we get rid of Gillespie, an academy goalkeeper will be the third choice? Academy goalkeeper. Yeah. We're not going to buy uh, another goalkeeper. I don't think buy two. If we go out big yeah. on the goalie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. Um, yeah, I think they'll 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 just do a an 
yeah, they'll just do a um, a young goalkeeper to come in and supplement. Yeah, I think that's how that's how they want they want to work it anyway. And there's a few in there. There's Reese Burn, and there's a few a few in the books there as well to, to work with. Um, yeah, so then maybe we go to the next position and a number six lads. We we've talked about it for a long time. Uh, it, it would, uh, yeah, that that uh, central defensive midfielder. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh, let me go back in. I'll do it again. Um, yeah, new number six, a hundred and ten percent. I think it's definitely needed. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look at this. So that's the fourth player that we're identifying as needing. There we go. The supplement. Now, mm-hmm. let's address the elephant in the room, boys. <clears throat> this man, <clears throat> if he's to leave. Mm. Does that mean we get two? Million percent. Yeah. Million percent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, need. To, I, don't, I don't need to change it on there, but I'm just saying. You know, it, it, are we having yeah. to then go and get two number number sixes, um, deep line holders, playmakers? I think. I think you're right. I think we are going to need to. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't want to think I, about I, life after Bruno. Life, yeah. Um, no. No. Um, question for you boys: um, <clears throat> Do we need a third choice here, or is that potentially where someone like uh, um, an Alfie Harrison comes in? Yeah, potentially, potentially. Yep, yeah, we um, have him on the in the twenty-five man squad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interested. Um, yeah, or. <laughs> Uh, which I know some people wouldn't like, or um, we retain Sean Longstaff, and then there's your there's your there's your extra one. Let's let's find out what people want, lads. Yeah. Would you want Sean Longstaff as that third centre midfielder, or would you want someone like Alfred Harrison as that third centre midfielder? That's what people think. I'll add him to the squad. Do do add them in because we, we've we have them in the 25 band squad and we've sold Sean Lung stuff in our um previous game. Um so That's it does make it interesting. Uh oh Toon Toon Gamers put something in the chat, interesting one. He says uh we're likely to sign Chris Rigg. It's another interesting one, isn't it? And he, I think he is a right side of central midfielder, isn't he? <clears throat> Yeah, but would what is he now? Seventeen? Would he come straight yeah, into development? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. He's, he gets he gets a lot of minutes for Sunderland. I know. I know they're only in the championship, but um, mm, yeah, it's a good point. It'd be, I suppose it'd be him and Harrison fighting it out, isn't it? Maybe. Mm. Maybe it's gonna be interesting. Very interesting. I've just added a few more in just while we were talking, boys. So. Yeah, yeah, sure, mate. Yeah, no, that's cool. Then, then, if we move away from the midfield, then I think I think we're well stocked in midfield. Then uh, at that stage, you know, we're adding Alfie Harrison in there. Yeah, but then obvious, obvious. There's two. There's two that stick out like a sore thumb as it was needing players here. It's oh, we'll start. Let's start with the the right hand side first. We need uh, a right uh, w- winger because we we've sold Miggy in our in our first game. And we said uh, we were sending, ended up sending Minta on loan uh, if if he doesn't produce in preseason. So in our virtual world here, um, so we we need to, we need to bring in a right winger, yeah, like a, a Rooney from um, Copenhagen. Oh, so um, yeah, it'll be it'll have it'll have suitors, but that again. Um, that will be a very interesting, very interesting signing. Um, that's for sure. But yeah, we, we, what we need, is, is, I think was what we said, is that a first choice right winger. Someone that comes in, starts every week. Yeah. Um, but then there's a question, and we talked about it. You know, do we do we go for another right winger? You mean Neto? 
<laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Um, I've taken a step back on that. Um, the injuries. <laughs> yeah, he's out for he's out for nine weeks. He's out for nine weeks with his his new um his new hamstring injury, and I'm just like, oh, we don't need that. We we don't need that. Um, I love him as a player, but I just think yeah. We, 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 and, and all the thoughts that are coming through in the chat. The talks shouts for Elise uh, to come in. This this talk shouts for Rafinha to come in as well. Uh, all great Rafinha. options. Rafinha, oh, what oh. a sign that would be. Jeez. Um, uh, uh, Michael Ali, Michael Elise, um, he's been heavily linked with Man United. Mm. Heavily linked with them. Uh, whether he goes or not, I don't know. But yeah. Mm. It's going to be interesting. But could, would you be happy with that pool of right wingers going into next season, potentially? Yeah. It, it, I suppose it would depend on the quality of the right winger. Uh, I like what Tacoina Fraser just wrote. He said, We need a proper box office right, with, right winger. And I, I completely agree. You need someone in the Anthony Gordon mold, someone who's going to come in and you just go, Buzzy Al, he's good. You know, like a like a, you know a proper out and out right winger who performs week in week out and is going to score your goals and create your goals. I don't think it can be another. With all due respect, I don't think it can be another Minter. It's got to be someone who can hit the ground running as soon as he steps through the door. If yeah. you if you if you put a Rafinha there with Minter and Murphy, yeah, I'm happy. If you put you know like a a young promising, I think someone mentioned Vuni Bilagi. I wouldn't be overly yeah. confident with that three. I'll be honest. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I'm tempted to just put where it's got new right wing. I'm just tempted to just throw throw a name in there like Rafinha or oh. someone else because that would just be quality. But um, all yeah. fire to the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could do this again in the summer and just put who we'd like to be yeah. those signings. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we continue yeah, that we're identifying them. Because we've got five five signings already, so a goalkeeper, a centre back, a left back, a central defensive midfielder, and a right winger. Mm. Let's go. To, and of course, the other thing is that Gordon at least can can play on on the right as well. Now we don't want to be going down uh, like what we've had to do this season, switching people around. But let's go straight to the number nine position because we we we've sold uh, Callum Wilson in our other game previous, so we need a a, a, a new striker. Yeah. Um, may, may, or maybe one, maybe even the right winger can play as a striker. Well, Gordon can also play as a striker, but we think we we definitely need one it, uh, for sure. Yeah, nah. Um, and I think what's really kind of um, what's really important in within this is that of where we've put the new striker. We're we're, we're still saying that Alexander Izak is the main man. Like he's yeah. the guy. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. if if we're playing our strongest eleven, Alexander Izak starts. So it has to be a striker that's going to be happy pushing Alexander Izak, but potentially just playing second fiddle. Um, and it's about who's going to be happy to do that. And I think that's going to be really our biggest issue with with getting a striker. Who's happy to play second fiddle? Who's happy to push Alexander Izak? Um, and I just think, particularly if we don't get into Europe, boys, that's going to be really difficult yeah. because there's not going to be a pool of games where loads of where you're not going to get loads and loads of players that are going to go, yeah, I'm going to come and play for you, but you're not in Europe, so you're not going to only going to play a certain amount of games. Yeah. Like he's he's the he's like a great option. Um, what Aaron's put in there, Sesco, Benjamin Sesco. We've mm -hmm. talked about him time and time yeah. again. Like he's a great option, but again, he's been playing second fiddle to Appenda at times this season, mm. and hasn't really played as many minutes as probably he would have liked. So is he going to want to come to Newcastle and do the same? Mm. That, that's 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 the question we've kind of got to ask ourselves. You know, if the money's right and the fees right, maybe. Do we do we find ourselves peace? I mean, I'd, I've I've done a quick recce up there as well. We've got twenty seven players on the pitch at the moment. Do, mm. Is there is there a possibility that we see? Um, is there a possibility that we see that right winger? Uh, you know, just to throw a name in there, as some people in the chat have mentioned, like a Benjamin Sesco, where you've got someone who can play off the right, but mm. someone who's going to get minutes. 
Um, and then obviously, you know, in-game management, you can swap things around. You can push Alexander Isak to the left. You can put um, Benjamin Sesko through the middle. Obviously, you can push Gordon into the middle if you need to. Um, you know, that that interchange in front line, is, is there a possibility that we, we perhaps see that we don't bring in that striker out and out <clears throat> and that we bring in someone like Sesko? So then you've got Gordon and Sesko with the options on the wing to supplement Alexander Isak. And then maybe you throw Wilson back in the equation. I don't know. Someone mentioned give Wilson another year. What what, what do you think on that? I'd have him as a third choice. Mm. I, I genuinely would. Like, um, to be fair, we have to remember with this squad, we have players that don't have to be entered into the 25-man squad. Mm -hmm. Kubin Minter mm -hmm. doesn't. Um, <laughs> Harrison, uh, sorry, uh, Alfie Harrison doesn't. Um, Lewis Hall doesn't. Lewis Miley doesn't. Yeah. So you've got one, two, three, four players that don't. So if you bring those numbers down, we've actually still got space in the squad for oh, cool. players to come in. Cool. So um, it, it, you know, we don't have to use those players because they're obviously because they're at a certain age, um, they, they don't need to be registered. Um, which, yeah, that, this is why some teams like your Man United, your Man Cities, and others, when they have these young players come through, and they look like they've got huge squads. It's because they have, because half of those players don't need to be registered. Um, so that's an important part to, to think about as well. Um, yeah, so I, I, I just, like for me, I, I would have Callum Wilson as a third choice, but I just think that we need to, we need to sell. I'd love having three strikers as options, but I think we'd only do that if we got Europe. We'd only consider it if we're playing European football. But, but Daz, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, look, I'm thinking that guys coming up. We, we have six uh, by this reckoning and what we've sold in the earlier game as well. If we can sell some of them and make make some some cash towards PSR, um, we've we've listed six players, six positions here. We need to to sign a goalkeeper, a centre back, a left back, a centre defensive midfielder, a right winger, and a striker. That's a lot uh, as well going into summer, and that's what we'd, we'd like to. And I know there's rumours that we're we're not not going to get as as much as we think we're going to get. What's new? Um, we'll we'll only see when, uh, how that plays out. But um, I'm, I'm thinking there's there's plenty of food for thought uh, in in what we've discussed here mm. in, in all of this. Sorry, Dave. Uh, David Cook put um, after. At last, after three chances, <laughs> I, 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 I can't see the comments. I've just clicked off now the the tactics board because I because I've got the tactics board up. I can't see the comments. So I apologise. They didn't see that earlier. But but yeah, it, you, we um, we don't have to count young players yeah. in the squad. Of course. Just to just to add in, uh, Tristan Hall there says, "Where did you hear that Sesco has ever played right wing in his life?" Uh, seriously, Akafor played right wing. You went to Milan. Yeah, apologies, Tristan. I'm I'm mistaken. I've just checked Benjamin Sesco's heat map and he actually plays off the left wing. I thought it was the right wing, but yeah, he plays off the left wing. He can play through the middle, obviously, as a striker, but predominantly, according to his heat map, he, he tends to play off the left wing. Um, so maybe, maybe he wouldn't be an option then because we are inundated with left wingers. Um, so perhaps that wouldn't be wouldn't be the choice. I, I don't know. I mean, he's right-footed, so maybe, maybe he could play off the right wing. I don't know, but he predominantly he looks like a left winger here. Okay, let's. I've, I have a question for you. All right, six, six. We've identified six areas, mm -hmm. but with with PSR and this, this another stint at our a virtual world, we're only allowed to strengthen in three. What three positions are we strengthening? <laughs> One, Pete. You can start us off there. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, okay. um, my prior. One of my priority positions. Um, is we need a right winger. That's my prior. Well, I, I'm going to say that's my priority position because in that position right now we are not strong enough. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just my opinion. We're just not strong enough as, in those in that right wing area. Um, so if you're asking me, right wing, then I'm going to go a striker. We need a striker. Uh, we need a striker that's fit, and then. <clears throat> You know what? With everybody fit and firing, I'm going to go centre-back. 
I really do think we need a new centre back. I think Botman and Shaw need pushing for their position. Mm. Shaw's going to be 33 this season. Can we ask him to go again? Probably. But should we be asking him to go again as the number one? I'm not quite sure. Mm. Chris, I'm going to ask you the same question, but the bit I'm going to add on onto it is you get the same question as as Pete. You, 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 we can only uh, bring in three, but we sell someone the last uh, the last week of the window, and we can strengthen the other positions as well. I want your order for the last the three areas. So, are you aligned with Pete? First of all, is is right wing your number one spot to go for? Yeah, definitely. Right wing is the priority. Um, oh, if you'd asked me that, if you'd asked me that towards the start of the season, I'd have said number six. But no, right wing is the priority for me. Okay, and what about your second position? Is it My second, striker? Um, no, on the basis that I think we could have Callum Wilson as the second option, and also, as I've mentioned before, uh, I want that hybrid right winger who could potentially play as the backup to Isaac. So for me, the second priority position would be number six. I want to see a midfielder who is different to what we've already got. Uh, I don't want to see another Sean Longstaff or another Louis Miley, with all due respect. I want someone who's brought in to do the job of a number six or at least release Bruno a bit further up the pitch. Somebody who somebody who adds to our quality um, in what we don't have. And that, for me, is, to use Pete's term, that ball breaker. Someone who can break up possession and just give the ball to another player to go higher up the pitch. So a cleaner up there, someone who puts out the fires, someone to just come in and just sweep up in front of that back four. So for me, that would be the second priority, number six, or defensive midfielder. So then of your third priority, you either have a goalkeeper or centre-back or left-back? I think left-back, we could get away with it because obviously we've got Lewis Hall who could step up and be the guy. Don't forget, we've got Tino, who we know is equally comfortable on the left. So I wouldn't mm. say that was a priority, mm. um, even though I would like one. Um, Centre-back, I do totally get where Pete's coming from um, in terms of bringing in that competition. <clears throat> and I suppose if you if you dangled certain centre-backs in front of me, I'd probably snap and say, oh, yeah, definitely. But for me, and I didn't think I'd say this, I think the third priority for me is a new goalkeeper because we need to really re rehash the, the current crop of goalkeepers under Nick Pope, who I think is decent. And I think he, you know, he is our outstanding number one. Uh, I would like to see someone to come in and challenge Nick Pope. And maybe, you know, we've seen the difference that a top, top goalkeeper can make to a team. Uh, we saw that when Alisson joined Liverpool, um, you know, it can make a huge difference to the way that we play. And I think watching Martin Dubravka of late has kind of made me realise that we need it all the more. Um, and can Nick Pope be relied on? Is Nick Pope is Nick Pope the, the the keeper at Newcastle for the next two or three years? I'm not so sure. Um, so if there was a, a young prospect of a goalkeeper, um, no names mentioned, Mama Ashley, somebody of that ilk, um, I think we go out and we spend big money, and then that's kind of you start in your spine. That's starting from the back and going right now. We push out and now we, you know fix all the other positions so for me the priority would be right wing number six goalkeeper cool right lads i think we can start wrapping up um and uh bring this show to a close uh just a quick shout out to our sponsors as well um Quick shout out to uh, the radiator shed.com and Russ and his radiators. You go check them out uh, whenever you uh, you get the chance, or uh, if you know someone that's uh, people starting to get out of jail there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if you need to get them installed, use uh, um, Russ's other uh, company, the install works. Go check that out as well. Also, shout out to H2O, H2O Bathroom Design Co. for all your bathroom needs and uh, showers and beautiful bathrooms that we, we've we've shown off before. Uh, go check out the website for, for the latest and greatest there. Um, that is it. Thanks for everyone for playing along in the chat as well. And uh, uh, oh, just to Chris, we've got we've got we do have a new sponsor announcement to make shortly. We're just in the process of finding up when we're going to get our new sponsor on. Um, so just to add in, we do have a new sponsor on board and they will all will be revealed very, very soon. 
Stay tuned for that. Um, also, just to mention as well that the charity game is coming up. The link, if you'd like to to uh, uh, donate to uh, towards the charity game for the Alan Shearer Foundation, is in the description of uh, this show. Uh, and yeah, 29th of March, we take on Newcastle Fans TV, and we have our squad is is is, is assembled. The, the loaded squad is assembled. Uh, the revenge game is on. Uh, all for a good cause and all a bit of a laugh. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, if you need to contact us uh, or find us, we're on across all the different platforms, YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and across the socials, X, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and Insta. And for business inquiries, contact us as loadedmagnufcinfo at gmail.com. Um, as I said earlier, thanks for everyone for playing along in the, in the chat. We, we 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 purposely didn't go towards the the questions today because, as you can see, it, it this takes so much so much time uh, to to get, to get us going as it is. But uh, thanks for playing along. We will see you on the next one. How'd you like that? Take care, everyone. <laughs>